Hello, and welcome to this overview of DCS World by the Fighter Collection and Eagle Dynamics. DCS stands for Digital Combat Simulator, and it is a free-to-play digital battlefield game focusing on military aircraft simulation. It includes a free SU-25T attack aircraft and other DCS modules created by Eagle Dynamics and our partners that can plug into it. DCS modules that can plug into DCS World include aircraft, maps, ground units, naval units, campaigns, etc. Current modules include the A-10C, K-50 Black Shark, the P-51D Mustang, Combined Arms, and Flaming Cliffs 3. The list and range of modules will grow over time. The future of DCS World looks very exciting with several new modules being developed by Eagle Dynamics and our partners. These include modern DCS fighters that include the FA-18C, the SU-27SM, the F-15C, as well as the Focke-Wulf 190, MiG-21 BIS, the F-86F, the L-29, the UH-1H, the MI-8 MTV-2, the AH-1G, the MI-24, and the OH-58, as well as others. New terrains, like Nevada, and new campaign scenarios are also in development by Eagle Dynamics and our partners. DCS World is a true sandbox simulation that will cover multiple time periods covering many types of combat and civilian units. DCS World allows both realistic gameplay as well as more relaxed gameplay to suit your gameplay needs. This video is designed to walk you through the front-end interface, explore the depth of the simulation, take a look at the SU-25T, and then discuss the currently available DCS modules. Let's start with the graphic user interface, the GUI. This is the main menu screen of DCS World. Along the bottom of the screen are icons to indicate the DCS modules for purchase, as well as those that you already own. To view DCS news, select the pullout tab to see news of new DCS products, updates, and events. These are updated each time you log on. Select the Instant Action button to quickly play mission and bypass mission briefings. Each loaded aircraft has a tab that when selected, displays Instant Action missions available for that aircraft. The Create Fast Mission button allows you to quickly generate missions by setting a few mission parameters such as aircraft type and country. You can select the Advanced button to set more detailed settings. In the Advanced settings, you can also set mission location and force sizes. After creating your settings, you can then choose to view the generated mission in the Mission Editor and further adjust it. The training page provides you training missions for all owned aircraft modules. Each aircraft has a tab that when selected displays the missions. Many of the aircraft have fully interactive training missions that walk you through the operation of the aircraft. Others have training videos that can be downloaded by pressing the download button. Single player missions can be selected from the mission button. Use the directory tool to locate and load the desired mission. Each module has its own mission folder. Each aircraft will also include one or more campaigns. From the Campaign screen, select the Aircraft tab to view available campaigns for it. When a campaign is selected, your current status is displayed as well as the ability to restart it. Each time you play a mission, you have the option to save it as a track file. View Save Track Files with the Replay menu. DCS World Multiplayer allows all DCS modules to interact with each other online. This includes all air, land, and sea player-controlled forces. We see DCS World Multiplayer as a true expression of the digital battlefield and will only grow with each new module release. Online games can be found using the internet or using a LAN connection. You also have the option for a direct IP connection. You have the option to easily set up your own mission server and use a multiplayer mission you created in the mission editor. Once hosted, you can set up a joint password protection if you wish. Prior to hosting or joining a mission, use the options screen to set up your username and connection speed. On the server list, you can see all detected mission servers. Each server includes a server name, mission name, number of players, game time, and ping. A password protected server will have an asterisk to the left of the server name. 
Click on the server you wish to join and then press the Join button. After joining the mission, you will see player slots available to both sides, who has joined which side and who is spectating. You can also click the chat button to talk with other players on the server. Click on an unoccupied position and either view the mission briefing or enter the game. The mission editor is perhaps the most powerful element of DCS World as it allows you to create as simple or as complex a single mission or multiplayer mission as you can dream up. The current mission editor map is focused on the Caucasus region and includes parts of Russia and much of Georgia. The map consists of 17 airfields, various terrain types, and large areas both land and sea. The map lends itself well to create missions ranging from counterinsurgencies to large force-on-force -force battles. Using the editor, you can place air, land, and sea forces on the map, give them routes, engagement orders, and many other attributes such as weapons, fuel, and camouflages. Using the trigger system, you can create cause and effect actions. A large number of possible conditions on the battlefield can lead to an equally large number of possible outcomes. This allows mission builders to create dynamic and engaging missions. This is an important tool that helps make the missions feel unpredictable and immersive. The editor also allows you to customize both standard and dynamic weather, but we'll talk about this more later in this video. Using missions you create in the mission editor, you can use the campaign builder to tie them together as a campaign in both linear and semi-dynamic ways. The encyclopedia is a handy reference for the hundreds of different systems in DCS World. Each entry in the encyclopedia has an image and important performance information. Each category of a system has a separate tab. After selecting a system, you can view the many different systems of each category. The option menu allows you to adjust how you wish to play the game, ranging from input controllers to difficulty levels. The first tab is the System tab, and it allows you to adjust the graphics setting to best suit your system performance and the visual style that you prefer. The next tab is for your input controls, and allows you to set specific control axes and functional input command settings for each of your DCS units. You can also use this tab to adjust your input control settings such as curves and dead zones. The Gameplay tab allows you to adjust difficulty and how information is presented to you. The Audio tab provides sliders to adjust different sound sources. The Miscellaneous tab includes various options that don't quite fit anywhere else. And the Special tab will have separate tabs for each module you have loaded with options specific to that module. The logbook allows you to create pilot personas for each of your DCS modules and your virtual pilots will have their missions tracked earn promotions and medals. Now that we reviewed the main menu GUI functions, let's take a closer look at the simulation environment that DCS missions take place in. This is the mission editor map again that our current DCS world missions take place in. However, we'll soon be seeing new maps from various locations from around the world. From north to south, the Caucasus map spans approximately 600 kilometers and approximately 300 kilometers east to west. You can use the map options to filter map data. Zoomed out, you can make out the varied topography, long coastlines, and several of the large cities. As we zoom in though, we begin to make out the extraordinary level of detail on the map down to individual buildings. Let's enter the simulation now and take a closer look at the battle space. Flying low over the hills west of Sanaki, Georgia, we see the gently winding roads with varying levels of road traffic as you can set in your option screens. Coming over the crest, we see the long rendering distance of distant hills, a city, and towns. Rolling out, we make out the small streams, an abundance of trees, and even light poles along the roads. We now find ourselves flying south along the Black Sea coast, approaching the airfield of Tsukumi. The water is animated, and as we near the shoreline, the water becomes transparent, revealing the ground beneath. Many of the runways are highly detailed, with high-resolution textures, runway and taxiway signs, radars, navigation aids, and buildings. Much of the map is covered by large forests composed of millions of trees. This is in addition to trees among the cities and villages and also that line the fields. We also see planted fields that vary in their look depending on the season. 
Along with the roads and rail lines with animated trains, we also make out the many power lines that crisscross the landscape. Here we have the snow-capped peak of Mount Elbrus. Mount Elbrus dominates the landscape as the highest peak in the Caucasus Mountains. The mountain region provides countless valleys and hidden villages, great for mission building. As mentioned earlier, DCS World includes both standard and dynamic weather tools that can really bring a mission to life. In either case, you can select the season, which will in turn affect the look of the world, time of daylighting, and even star patterns. When using dynamic weather, you can select to use either high or low pressure systems and the number of such systems on the map. Once generated, a dynamic weather system with generator that includes weather fronts, moving weather, and the ability to take off from clear skies and land in a thunderstorm. And we also set the level of turbulence and also the visibility and thickness of fog. The standard weather tool removes the dynamic creation and front movement, but it adds greater fine control that includes cloud base, thickness, precipitation, and wind direction and speed at three different elevation bands. Depending on your weather settings, you could have clear skies, partly cloudy, or completely cloud covered. The system provides a great deal of cloud flexibility. The clouds themselves are fully 3D rendered and project shadows. When the temperature is above freezing, you have the option for rain and thunderstorms. Even the rain droplets are visible hitting the water. When below freezing, snow is possible. This works well with the season set to winter, and the ground, trees, and even many of the units are colored to match. Another important part of the environment is lighting. DCS World models dynamic time of day lighting to include shadows and building, street, and airfield lighting. Once the stars come out, accurate constellations are rendered. When the sun goes down, some units have night vision goggles and thermal imagers to allow them to fight at night. Now that we discussed the combat environment, let's take a look at the different types of units that can take part in the mission in their various roles. DCS World includes a large collection of fighter aircraft that can engage targets well outside of visual range. Such aircraft like the F-14, the F-15, and the MiG-31 seen here can engage multiple targets at the same time. These aircraft can use both semi-active and active radar homing missiles. Once aircraft reach the merge, the dogfight logic takes over and they are quite capable of maneuvering in the horizontal and vertical to get on a target 6. Aircraft like the MiG-29 and F-16 are particularly adapt at this, and some aircraft, like several of the Russian aircraft, can use high off bore sight infrared guided missiles. Close air support aircraft like the Warthog and Frogfoot have a large arsenal of weapons to attack mobile ground units. These include guided missiles, cluster bombs, unguided rockets, and cannon. As with all aircraft, they will take defensive actions when under attack, such as defensive maneuvering, chaff, flares, and the use of ECM. When attacking fixed ground targets, several aircraft like the B-1B, the Tu-160, and the B-52 come into their own. Typical targets for such missions include bridges, buildings, and in this case, a runway. These aircraft can also use long-range land attack cruise missiles that hug the ground while en route to their target. When an enemy air defense site needs to be destroyed, suppression of enemy air defenses aircraft come into play. When attacking radar-guided SAM sites, aircraft armed with weapons such as HARM, ALARM, and the KH-58 can reach out and destroy radars from great distances. Closer in, they can use other missiles like Mavericks and the KH-29 to destroy infrared-guided missile systems and AAA sites. Several aircraft like the Hornet, Tornado, and Backfire are capable of engaging surface vessels with anti-ship missiles. Particularly when delivered in mass, such an attack can overwhelm any ship's defenses. However, many ships in DCS World do have anti-ship missile defense systems, including missiles and gun systems. For long duration missions, many of the aircraft are capable of aerial refueling from either a KC-135, an IL-78M, or the S-3 Viking. DCS World supports both probe and droge and flying boom refueling systems. Seen here, an F-15E hooks up with the KC-135 while en route to target. 
An important part of modern air operations is AWACS support. DCS supports several AWACSs including E3 Sentry and the A50U Mainstay. Attack helicopters like the Black Shark, the Apache, and the Hind play a very important role in DCS world and can decimate unprotected ground forces. Capable of employing anti-tank guided missiles, rockets, and cannon fire, these units can stand off at long range and rain down terror. Transport helicopters like the HIP, Black Hawk, and Chinook can add a new dimension to missions by creating opportunities for search and rescue and troop drop-off and pickup. Transport helos can take off and land on any flat terrain. A key player in the modern battlefield are armed drones. DCS World includes a Predator, which can be armed with Hellfire missiles. Scenarios can be easily created that have terrorist forces hiding out in the mountains being engaged by an overhead Predator. Let's take a look at the ground forces now. DCS World includes a large array of main battle tanks from various countries including the US, Russia, the UK, Germany, and France. Tanks can fire both heat and sable rounds, and in the case of the Russian tanks, they can also fire anti-tank missiles. A large number of infantry fighting vehicles and APCs are also included. All armored vehicles have front, side, rear, and top armor values and attributes that vary per vehicle. When engaged, ground forces will automatically disperse, release smoke grenades, and return fire if possible. Indirect fire systems include cruise served mortars, self-propelled mortars, self-propelled artillery, and multiple rocket launchers like the MLRS and Smirch. Here we see the effect of a large-scale MLRS barrage using cluster munitions on an airfield. Pretty devastating. In addition to vehicle ground forces, DCS World also includes animated infantry. Infantry forces are armed with assault rifles, machine guns, and even RPGs. Both American and Russian infantry, as well as insurgents, are included. The low-altitude air defense role is filled by a large assortment of Western and Eastern AAA systems and short-range infrared-guided SAM systems. In this case, we have Shilkovs engaging low-flying helicopters. For longer-range air defense, numerous medium and long-range radar-guided SAM systems are also included, like the SA-15 here. This is in addition to SAM batteries like the Patriot and the SA-10 that can engage multiple targets at the same time and even some types of missiles. We'll now move on to discuss the naval units in DCS World. With the Caucasus map encompassing the entire Black Sea to play in, naval operations can play a key role in DCS missions and campaigns. The sea itself has varying sea states that depend on the wind conditions. This variable sea state can in turn affect the roll and pitch of naval vessels. This becomes particularly noticeable when trapping on the carrier. Both the Russian Kuznetsov class and the American Nimitz class aircraft carriers are included in DCS World. Both are capable of launching and recovering aircraft. This includes both AI and player controlled aircraft like the Su-33 and the upcoming Hornet. Both carrier types are also capable of defending themselves with both gun and missile defenses against both aircraft and anti-ship cruise missiles. Naval surface warfare is also possible with both American and Russian vessels. Both operate anti-ship missiles like the American Harpoon and the Russian Basalt. When in close, many of the warships also have deck guns that will use to engage each other with. Cruisers like the American Ticonderoga class with its AG system and the Russian Kirov class with its S-300 fort system, shown here, have sophisticated air defense systems that can track and engage many airborne targets at the same time. These provide a deadly shield against any air threats attacking the battle groups they defend. Some ships are capable of attacking land targets. Here we have a Ticonderoga class cruiser attacking a SAM site with a vertically launched Tomahawk cruise missile. Tomahawks are a great tool to hit heavily defended targets far inland. In addition to cruise missiles, most of the warships have one or more deck guns that can be used for shore bombardment. As part of DCS World, you are provided a free aircraft, the Su-25T Frogfoot. The Su-25T is a very capable close air support aircraft that can employ a wide array of weaponry. In some ways, it is in fact superior to the A-10C 
and that is faster and it can more effectively engage air defense systems. The SC-25T is a robust and easy to operate aircraft and with the occlusion of its false sensor, it can be very deadly on engaging targets from long range. The SC-25T model is highly detailed as you can see and has many types of visible and performance damage that it can suffer during battles. Here we have the cockpit of the Frogfoot with the front instrument panel, the heads-up display, the HUD, at the top center, and the Schwal TV display to the right of the HUD. Starting the aircraft is very easy. The first thing we'll do is press right shift and L at the same time to turn on the electrical systems. As you can see, many of the instruments and lights come to life now. We will now start the left engine by pressing right alt and home at the same time. From the outside view, you can start to see the turbine fan starting to spin. Now that the left engine is up to speed, we'll press right control plus home at the same time to start the right engine. Close the canopy by pressing left control and C at the same time. We're going to skip ahead a little now and place this on the runway. To taxi and use nose wheel steering, press X and Z. As we line up on center line, gradually increase throttle and use small rudder inputs to keep you tracking straight down the runway. Be careful not to over control when taking off and use small and smooth rudder corrections. You can know your airspeed in kilometers per hour in the top left corner of the HUD and your altitude in meters in the top right corner of the HUD. Gently pull back on the stick around 270 kilometers per hour. Once off the ground, plus G to raise your landing gear and F to raise your flaps. The SC-25T has what we term an AFM or Advanced Flight Model. This is a full force physics based flight model that provides a very realistic feeling of flight. But perhaps one of the most visual ways to see this is what happens when a landing goes very, and I mean very, bad. The SC-25T can use several types of guided air-to-surface missiles, but will first enter the ground attack mode by pressing the 7 key. After turning on the Schwal sensor by pressing the O key, you can slew the sensor around by pressing the semicolon, apostrophe, comma, period, and forward slash keys. Once you place the box over a target, press the enter key to lock it up. In this case, I have a long range KH 29T missile selected. The LA indication indicates that the launch is authorized. On the TV display, the range is listed below the launch indication. If you wish, you can zoom in and out on the display by pressing the plus and minus keys. To the right of the target range is a countdown timer until weapon impact. Target hit. I'll now switch to the Vicar missile by pressing the D key. The Vicar is laser guided, so I also press right shift plus O to turn on the laser. This is a quick demonstration of using two different types of guided missiles. The SC-25 can employ several different types of unguided bombs, including cluster bombs and high explosive. In this example, I've locked up a convoy using a Schwal, as indicated on the TV display in the HUD. I've selected cluster bombs and I'm flying to align the aircraft bombing circle with the Schwal indication. Once I have the launch authorization, I release the weapon. Let's take a look at this from the outside. In addition to unguided bombs, you can also use unguided rockets in the Frogfoot's internal cannon. I'm using the Schwal again to find the target and also assist in my aiming. One of the most useful missions of the SC-25T is its ability to detect, track, and engage radar-guided air defense systems with the KH-58 and the KH-MPU anti-radiation missiles. After turning on the Phantasmagoria pod that detects and tracks enemy radars by pressing the I key, you slew the cursor on the HUD over the squares that indicate detected radars and lock them. 
Once in range, indicated by the launch authorization indication, we can launch the missiles and they will home in automatically. For AAA and short range infrared guided defense systems, you can use the Schwal to locate targets and then use the KH-29 or the Vicar to hit them outside their engagement range. Although certainly not a fighter, the Frogfoot can be armed with the R-73 Archer air-to-air -air missile. Press 6 to enter missile aiming mode and fly to place the cross on the HUD over the target to lock it up. You've now seen an overview of our DCS World Vision, how to navigate the GUI, seen the depth of the simulation, and an operational introduction to the free SU-25 Frogfoot. We hope you've sparked your interest in taking a hands-on look at DCS World. If so, we invite you to play this all for free. You can download DCS World from www.dcs-world.com. After you've acquainted yourself with DCS World and SU-25T, we have several DCS modules that are available for purchase. This stable of modules is growing all the time and will cover air, land, and sea units, as well as new maps, campaigns, and other content. The first DCS module I'd like to discuss is the A10C Warthog. DCS A10C Warthog grew from a simulation created to train real A10C pilots, and it's an incredibly realistic look at this warbird. Warthog includes the full range of A-10C weapons that include GPS weapons, laser-guided bombs, Maverick-guided missiles, and of course, its 30mm Gatling gun cannon. To help locate targets, the A-10C has an in-depth simulation of the targeting pod, as well as an interactive Joint Terminal Attack Controller, or JTAC, to help talk you on the targets. For navigation, we've included the interactive moving map, the inertial navigation system, the GPS navigation system, navigation beacons, and of course, the yeah. instrument landing yeah. system, or ILS. Pull up. Pull up. System modeling inside the aircraft has no peer. Almost all the systems have been exhaustively modeled to include the engines, the fuel system, the electrical system, hydraulics, lighting, defensive countermeasures, radios, and the autopilot. The cockpit itself is fully rendered and allows six degrees of freedom view of movement. As such, you can move your head around the cockpit at any angle. The cockpit is also dynamically lit with moving shadows. Finally, the Warthog includes many levels of both visible and system damage modeling. DCS Black Shark was our first DCS module and is a simulation of the Russian KMA-50 attack helicopter. The first thing you'll notice about the KMA-50 is that it is a coaxial helicopter that only requires one pilot to fly. Unique to the KMA-50 is an ejection seat that fires off only after the rotors have first been blown away. Like the A10C cockpit, the Ka 50 cockpit is fully 3D rendered with almost all buttons, switches, and dials fully operational. It is an incredibly realistic look at this helicopter that also includes a very advanced flight model. Also known as the Black Shark, the Ka 50 also uses the Schwal TV sensor and Vicar anti-tank guided missiles like the SU-25T. In addition to Vicar, the Black Shark can also use its 30mm cannon, unguided rockets, and even bombs. The venerable P-51D Mustang is our first module in the Flying Legend series for DCS. Like A-10C and Black Shark, Mustang uses a very advanced flight model that is most evident when departing the aircraft, edge of the envelope flying, and flying with battle damage. The engine, fuel, electrical, and other systems of the Mustang are modeled in great detail, as well as the authentic cockpit. Mustang, along with future DCS Flying Legends aircraft like the Falk Wolf 190 and future maps, will gradually add a new dimension to DCS world. Along with the challenges of taking off, navigating, and learning to land, all the combat systems are modeled in P-51. This not only includes the 50 caliber guns, unguided rockets, and bombs, but also includes all the cockpit switches, buttons, and dials that controls weapons. DCS Combined Arms is a module that allows you to control forces from the command map and take direct first-person control of many combat ground units. Combined Arms has an option for Fog of War that allows you to only see enemy forces that your side has detected. This makes reconnaissance units all the more important. From the command map, you can set routes for both air and ground units. When moving ground forces, you can have them travel cross country or follow roads. Depending on the unit, you can set the roles of engagement, combat state, and formation. You can play missions entirely from the command map, 
or you can use it to dynamically command other friendly forces while you are in the cockpit of a DCS aircraft. Most of the combat capable ground units in DCS World can be first person controlled if combined arms is installed. In this case, I'm commanding an M1A2 platoon in which I can set the rules of engagement and formations while still inside the mission. Depending on the unit type, you can take control of different turrets, select different weapons, change ammunition types, and toggle between magnification levels. In this case, I'm in control of an SA-8 OSA SAM system as I engage a nearby A-10. Combined arms unit control is not intended at this time to be a detailed and realistic portrayal of commanding one of these ground units. Rather, it's an easy to use game element that allows players to very easily enter these battles from the perspective of a ground unit commander. Flaming Cliffs 3 allows you to fly seven different aircraft from this long-running lock-on series. Unlike the A-10C, Black Shark, and Mustang, there are very detailed simulations of single aircraft. Flaming Cliffs 3 provides seven different aircraft, but at a much more shallow learning curve. Aircraft of Flaming Cliffs 3 include the American F-15C and the A-10A, and the Russian Su-27, Su-25, MiG-29A, MiG-29S, and the aircraft carrier capable Su-33. The F-15C seen here and the Su-27, the A-10A, and the Su-25 feature new highly detailed six degrees of freedom view cockpits and updated artwork. There are also many updates and new avionic improvements to these aircraft, and air-to-air missiles have received realistic flight models. As part of DCS World, players can fly Flaming Cliffs 3 aircraft online with other DCS World modules and combined arms. This concludes a look at our currently available DCS modules, but many more are currently in development by both Eagle Dynamics and our partners. Stay tuned.